red unis after three of their higher seed whites were stolen from their hotel. Seahawks hoping to steal a win. John Goldsberry right there. He hit eight of eight from the three. Then Brett Blizzard, he goes for three. Wilmington is up three. 3.30 left. Drew Nicholas, he was five of eight from three. That was not his biggest hit. Two-point game. 27 seconds left. Team's kicking the ball around. Steve Blake triples from the corner. He had 8.7 assists. Maryland with the lead. 10 seconds left. Aaron Coombs going to the hall. And he's fouled hard. This kid, nine of 22 on the season. No freebie jeebies. He hits them both. Seahawks lead by one. One last chance for your defending champs and Nicholas. Stop it! Doing his best Juan Dixon imitation. Take another look, make sure he beat the clock. Gary Williams, I need the clock! No doubt about it, and no doubt about it, he was behind the three-point line. Brad Brown out, he cannot believe it. 75-73 afterwards, Nicholas, what up? I just kind of ran up and got the ball. And um, I just took it as far as I could and I tried to make something happen. Um, you know, I know the shot probably didn't look the prettiest, but, you know, it went in, and I, I really couldn't believe it after it went through. Five seconds is an eternity in basketball, and uh, as a defender, you're just trying to do the best you can to make them take a tough shot and, and not do anything to draw contact to give the official a chance. And so, I mean, I, we did everything we can do, and give credit to Drew Nicholas. He made a, he made a game winner. Well, since the tournament went to its current format in 1985, only one other defending champ has had as close a first-round call as Maryland. The 95 Razorbacks beat Texas Southern by one point a year after winning it all. That Arkansas team ended up advancing to the championship game and eventually lost to UCLA. Last chance for a 12 to beat a 5 in this tournament. Can the Butler do it facing Mississippi State? Ten seconds left. Butler down one. Brandon Miller with the floater. Butler up one. Five seconds left. Mississippi State's Timmy Bowers going to win this ball game. Right there. No! Butler, 47-46. The Horizon League adds another impressive win to its postseason resume. What about Wake Forest in the East region? East Tennessee State pushing them, but Teron Downey hits one of Wake's six three-pointers in the day. But here's East Tennessee State with one of their 12 steals. Tim Smith gets it back later in the possession. East Tennessee State down three, not anymore. Tied up with 28 on the clock. Now after a couple of free throws, Smith trying to be the hero, pulls the three. That was not one shining moment. Wake Forest, whew. Deep breath from the folks down in Winston-Salem. They survive. The Buccaneers of East Tennessee State, there were five different men for Wake Forest in double figures. Eric Williams led the way with 20. Zakiwa Dude had 20. Tim Smith had 22 for East Tennessee State. Again, it was a struggle for the two seed. The motto, survive, advance. Wake did just that. We died hard. This game was uh, not atypical uh, for Wake Forest. We've had a lot of games like this. and. Uh, uh, again, I would uh, give the credit for that to uh, East Tennessee State. Uh, having said that, you know, we're, we'll be, after tonight, I think 32 teams left, and uh, we're happy to still be, uh, still be playing. Folks in Tampa saw some great basketball. The early game, Marquis Daniels with Auburn down. Not anymore. Give me all three of these. And Auburn's up a deuce, but here comes Jameer Nelson all the way to the rack. He's fouled with .5 on the clock. Got to have them both, kid. Woo, off the front rim, barely. Team mates on the bench. The Hawk never dies. Bang. Nelson at 32. We're heading to overtime. In OT, Auburn was down by as many as four. But Daniels will not let them go. A lay-in and one. He makes the free throw. Auburn up one. 16 seconds left. Tyrone Barley called for an offensive foul. There you see the off arm. He shoves. Going to get called every time. Last chance for St. Joe's. Pat Carroll trying to be the hero, just like East Tennessee State on the same bucket. A three that would have won it does not go. Amazingly enough, these teams met once. 47 years ago, the only time they faced each other, Auburn won that one by two points as well. Daniels, as I said, led the way for Auburn with 25. Afterwards, Cliff Ellis had something to say to those who ripped his team for being included in the tournament. We proved our point. We've done it all year. I mean, we beat a good team. That's enough of that. Uh, you know, we played that underdog role, and we played it, and we deserve to be here. Uh, we earned that right. We showed it. You are going to have days where you're going to be disappointed, where you're not going to get out what you put in. And unfortunately for us today, 
we didn't get out what we put in. In Boston, Oklahoma State on a three-game NCAA losing streak, penned down to them by five. Andy two up top to Coco Archibong, two of his seven. Coco. Quakers down by just three. This, this team, though, gets it done on defense. Victor Williams, one of 12 Cowboy steals, takes it the length of the floor. He had 29. Final minute, pokes up nine. Williams to Tony Allen, and he be jamming. He had 15. Oklahoma State wins it 77 63. They shot 54% from the field. Cowboys make it out of the first round after losing in the first in 01 and 02. Penn 18 turnovers forced by the Cowboys. Manhattan, a trendy pick to beat Syracuse. Orangemen had other ideas, but Luis Flores. Lines up from three, got it to go. He had 20. Syracuse up by three. Akeem Work missed the entire first half with a stomach bug. Gutted it out for 10 points in the second half. Put the Qs up five. And this team about the freshman and about Carmelo Anthony, two of his game high 17. Qs goes on to win at 76. 65. They shot 58% on the afternoon. Syracuse now 19 and 3 all time in the NCAA tournament. Opening games under Jim Beheim. 33rd career win in the NCAA tournament for him. She was going to give Texas trouble. Well, <laughs> a lot of folks didn't think Purdue was going to give LSU trouble. Willie Dean on the break after the block from Chris Booker. Willie Dean with a floater. Purdue's up 14, stretching it out. Melvin Buckley focused earnestly on his craft. Five of six from outside the line. 20 points for him. Purdue absolutely stomps LSU. They score 80 for the first time since February 1st. They shoot 55% from the floor, even better from three-point range where they were 9 of 16. Purdue's won the last eight first-round games they've played. They face, well, I'm not going to tell you who they face next. I would ruin it. But LSU shot 36% from, from the floor, and they, frankly, are shocked. I was telling Ronald in the locker room, it, it's almost like a bad dream. And, you know, it, we looked at each other, and we smiled and we actually laughed because I was telling him I, I, I need a I, I better <laughs> smile before I start crying. Um, I mean, it's like I told him it was like it was, I was in a nightmare. Well, it's over now. It, it wasn't a whole lot of drama about who they're going to play. Rick Barnes, Texas. I am going to sell it. Their first one seed, TJ Ford, maybe the best in the land with a nice flip to Sid Mill Harris for the land. Texas up by only 10 at the half. Second half, they begin to systematically stretch it out. TJ Ford only had 8 and 11. They didn't need any more from her. They probably would have got it. Texas. Fairly workmanlike win. Four horns and double figures. They shoot 50% from the field. Brandon Mouton led with 15. Asheville, the only team in the tournament with a losing record. Hey, give it up for them. They got that one win. Their tournament is now complete. 8-9 game in the Midwest, Utah and Oregon. And we have Discord, the Oregon Duck, and the Utah Ute get into it. you got to be kidding. Mascot madness. Both asked, asked to leave the floor. The real scuffle on the floor. Nick Jacobson's three misses, but he gets fouled by Luke Ridnour. Watch, he tries to take the angle, knocks the shoulder into him. Jacobson would take two of three. He had 23. Final 10, James Davis, no. Gets it back. James Davis, no. Doesn't get it back. Ducks, no. They don't get another chance. It's over. Utah wins it 60-58. The mascots and everybody else, you're done there. You can't fight a guy dressed as a duck. Yeah, and the winner, well, the guy who won, yeah. they say he got a big head about it, but... <laughs> yeah. Seven Utes played 23 minutes or more. Utah shooting just 30% from the field. Rick Majer is doing a masterful job in this one. Ridnour, the foul. Not a good game otherwise as well. 3 of 13 from the field, 0 for 5 from beyond the stripe, just 13 points, and his head coach not all that happy with him afterward. They did a nice job a couple times, make him go to his left and, and, and really double team him a couple times coming off that high post ball screen. But when you really break down the game and really have to isolate it, uh, a lot of it came down to missing some shots that he normally hits and, and got him out of his own rhythm a little bit because, you know, he's hit some tough buckets, some big shots. We tend to let him go and let him make plays. And he started to get going a little bit in that second half. So uh, a lot of it, I would say half of it was their defense. Half of it might have been him just out of rhythm a little bit. Everyone's favorite five-letter team, IUPUI in Kentucky. Ron Hunter, very entertaining for the Jaguars when they made their first NCAA tournament appearance back on March 11th. Thank you, Lord! Thank you! Well, don't thank him just yet. You got Kentucky on the way. Off the steal, Chuck Hayes pushing it ahead to keep Bogans. Two hands, Kentucky up 10, Bogans at 13. Second half, all blue. One, two.
to a three. Gerald Fitch knocks that down. Kentucky up 24. Fitch tied his career high with 25, and the Cats win it. Final margin was 31 points. Virtually impossible to beat a team, but they hold you to 36% shooting, and they shoot 61% from That's the field bad. and 10 of 20 from three-point land. Afterward, the endlessly entertaining Ron Hunter pretty much summed things up. We wanted to stop Bogans and so did Fitch kid. We wanted to, we, we stopped we went a triangle in two and we stopped the guards and then the big guys kept going. I mean their size was you know something we were concerned with, but we know their best players are their perimeter guys. They were bringing another McDonald's All American off the bench and I bring a guy that didn't even have a scholarship off the bench. So <laughs> I mean sometimes down the line it was you know you, you're you're going to run into it, but uh, I mean they are a great team. I mean they 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 are a talented. They are the best in the country. The Clippers couldn't beat them. The Cavaliers couldn't beat them. They are the best in the country, and that is not the put pressure on Kentucky, but you know what? They're supposed to be the best because they have the best. The title last year, taking on Alabama, his alma mater, another great finish here. Bracey Wright, the Hoosiers, freshman of the hole, gets the lay, and he had 17 after a scoreless first half. Indiana led by six. Next possession, Mo Williams. Pressure three makes it a three-point game in a final minute. Last chance for Alabama. Williams misses the three. A.J. Moye. On the run, they're trying to foul Indiana. Covered a good job of getting rid of the ball. And there is Moye for the dunk and the run out. And Indiana, just like Maryland, survived. It's a tough one. Well, Tom Coverdale finally showed up tonight. Both halves, 23 points, 8 assists, 8 rebounds. And Bracey Wright getting 17. Coverdale's leadership is the reason why they won this game. First half, Lionel Chalmers on the break. Throwing it up. Romain Sato throwing it down. Musketeers led by as many as 20. Second half. Sato again, this time for three. He had 18, and Xavier wins it 71-59. Slowed by foul trouble, 8-10 player of the year, David West had 12 points and 8 rebounds. Lionel Chalmers hit five threes against a matchup zone to lead the way with 20. Musketeers have won 17 of 18. Xavier, the only 8-10 team to post the win in the NCAA tournament. Making their fifth straight appearance, their first round opponent, Sam Houston State. David Lee going to work. He had a career high 23. Second half, Lee again taking it hard to the rack. His previous career high was 22 against Vandy. Florida, the only team to enter this year's tourney with three straight losses, gets back on track. 85 to 55. Billy Donovan gets his ninth NCAA tourney win. Prior to his arrival in Gainesville, Florida only had seven total victories in the show. Bearcats forward Felton Freeman said they hit a ton of threes. Florida made 13 threes. They live and die by the threes. Tonight they lived. Michigan State beats Colorado. Spartans are 17 and 4 in the NCAA tournament under Tom Izzo, whose 809 winning percentage is the best among active coaches. Improved to 57 and 0 all time against the Northeast Conference. They held Wagner to 10 baskets and forced 10 turnovers in the first half.